Hello and welcome to the Coastal Noise Podcast. To hear more podcasts, you can go to coastalnoise.com, go to the podcast page, and we have all of our episodes there for you. You can stream any of them uh, right there off the website, or you can download the audio file to your smartphone or your computer. Once you put it on your computer, you can move the file to your MP3 player and take it with you on your portable audio device. We have also recently launched a YouTube channel which has some of our most recent shows, including the one you're hearing now. You can check out the other episodes with Roscoe Bandana, uh, Nick Quave, and Chase Taylor of Crest Live, Tiffany Langlanez, and Nathan Pierce, and many others. You can click on the YouTube icon on the left side of the Coastal Noise page and it will direct you to the YouTube account. It's right next to our Facebook and Twitter icons, which you can click to like or follow. The Facebook page, like our YouTube account, is brand new, so please help us grow it by giving us a like to help support the show. Uh, other places to check out on the Coastal Noise website is the video section for Dr. Sanjay Gupta's documentaries, which deals with the same ch- subject matter that we discuss in today's episode. Um, and it also deals with the same thing that Harper Grace uh, goes through and that will give you a little bit more insight on what the what the sickness is and what some possible med- medicinal alternatives have come about to help with people with such conditions. You can also check out the blog page which in the next day or two I will upload the extended show notes for this episode. You can also go to the store page in the next couple days if you would like to support the show by purchasing a Coastal Noise shirt. In this episode, I met with two people united by one common cause. From the Supreme Court chamber at the Capitol in Jackson, Mississippi, I met with Ashley Dervale, the mother of a two-year-old girl who suffers from a condition called Dervais syndrome, which causes severe epileptic seizures on a regular basis, which progressively worsens with age causing a number of mental and physical ailments. When she, like so many others, had exhausted every resource she could find for her daughter, she turned to cannabidiol, an extract that comes from cannabis. But to receive this medicine, her family would have to either move to one of the many states that have legalized medical marijuana or fight to change legislation here. To do that, her family reached out to the man who was my second guest on the show. Senator Josh Harkins championed the bill that would allow patients to have access to CBD oils if approved by a doctor. After watching compelling pro-medical marijuana documentaries such as Dr. Sanjay Gupta's CNN broadcasted special called Weeds, and after extensive research, Senator Harkins knew he had to act. Within a matter of only a few months, he had created and passed the bill. Now, Mississippi residents with certain medical conditions will be able to legally obtain cannabidiol that will be grown and distributed by the University of Mississippi. In our hour-long conversation, we discussed the struggles that Ashley's daughter, Harper Grace, who the bill was named after, faces on a daily basis. We hear the story of how she discovered CBD oils, what it is, and how it compares to traditional pharmaceutical medicines and why the approved medicine does not produce the high state of mind commonly associated with marijuana. We also talk about how the bill was created and why Congress passed it with such speed and with almost no naysayers. Even the DEA and the federal government have approved what Mississippi is doing. We explore the research possibilities, the history of marijuana's illegal status, social barriers created by prescription drug companies, for-profit prisons, alcohol and tobacco industries, all who stand to lose profit against the legal forms of cannabis and quietly spend millions of dollars every year to campaign against it. What kind of new industries could arrive in this green market given its current status in America? Mississippi seems like the perfect place for such industries and many years ago was a premier state for cannabis cultivation of all kinds. What does the future hold for Mississippi in regards to all of this? We discuss that and much more on this episode of the Coastal Noise podcast. Enjoy. (laughs) 
Well, uh, to start it off, uh, I wanted to read an excerpt of, of how this all came together, the, the very root of how this began for me. This is a, a newspaper that I've kept since April 19th when I first picked it up. And since then, you know, a couple of weeks have gone by that I followed up from it. And uh, let me just read what it is here. And it says, Brian O'Kay's bill to allow marijuana extract for medication. A new bill approved Thursday, uh, which would have been April 17th, may be the last hope for an eight-year-old in Diamond Head. A day before the Friday deadline, Governor Phil Bryant signed off on a measure allowing a marijuana extract to be prescribed in Mississippi. It was approved by legislators three weeks ago, and Bryant said he signed it only after the Bureau of Narcotics officials assured him that the substance can't be used to produce a high. Cannabidiol or CBD for short, has been shown in several studies to treat symptoms of epilepsy and a variety of other illnesses. The bill becomes law July 1st. Ashley, I want to ask you first, from what I just read, how does, how does this article, this bill, affect you personally and your family? Well, <laughs> that's such a, um, that's a, such a broad, spectrum um it affects us on a number of um different levels um of course it will benefit our daughter of course um who is two years old and was recently diagnosed with Dravet syndrome which is a form of just severe epilepsy mm -hmm. um and it also affects us because of all of the other children in mississippi who it is going to benefit and help and um I felt really just convicted and compelled to um, pursue this because um, when I contacted Paige Fiji and she said, well, you know, you just need to move to Colorado. And she too is a Drove mom who got the bill passed in Colorado. And, um, and I just said, well, that's just not an option for me right now. And um, we can't just pick up our family and move. It's just, it's just, it's not going to happen overnight. So we just said, well, what can we do to try and get it legalized here? And then and Senator Harkins is, came along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this has all started uh, essentially with your family, this bill that has well, come about. It, it's a lot of people have kind of piggybacked on it, yes, but it was through. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, Harper Grace. Yes, her story was the initial first one that came to um, Senator Harkin's attention. And the um, bill is named after her. Right, yes, absolutely. And um, which is such an honor. Um, I can, it really is. Um, but yes, after, you know, we presented this in front of the committee, would you say? Was that the first one, Josh? Yeah, in front of the committee. Um, then it just kind of went viral. And then all these other families just sort of, kind of jumped on board and we're like and then I, we met so many different families and children who suffer from not the same thing but other severe um seizure disorders so it's been a pleasure meeting different families who are exactly like you if not worse mm -hmm. and i don't want to call it a pleasure per se but just knowing that you're not alone mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I want to start at the root of kind of where this all began for right. for you, and both of you, you know, free to interject with each other and explain your parts of it of how it all began. Well, now, it was kind of an interesting story of a mutual friend of ours. I guess it's uh, Harbor Grace's godmother mm -hmm. graduated high school with me, and uh, she contacted me through Facebook and and asked me to call her, and so I did. And she said, hey, I got a friend whose daughter is real sick and she needs your help. And so I didn't know what the, the first you know, thought through my mind was, okay, she's having a problem you know, with Medicaid or maybe there's something going on that she needs my help. So I'm like, okay, well, what does she need me to do? And she goes, she needs you to legalize marijuana. <laughs> and I said, well, that's probably not gonna happen. So what, what else can I do? She's like, well, no, just, I'm gonna give her your email address and she's gonna send you some information, just read it and research it and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's not really marijuana and just you, you need to watch this video and, and see what we're talking about. And so um, after I got off the phone with her, I just remember thinking, I was like, you know, she's crazy if she thinks I'm gonna be able to legalize marijuana <laughs> right. in Mississippi. I mean, I, there's no way. And so 
I got the email from her and this was sort of late in the fall when all this kind of began. The mm -hmm. session started in January. This was, you know, November. This is yeah, November. Novemberish yeah. uh into December that I'm I'm getting this and so I remember getting in bed one night and I was on my iPad and my wife was like, you know, are you gonna look at that thing all night? And I was like, Well, I wanna look at something real quick, uh, that I promised somebody I would. So I watched the the video Dr. Gupta did of the documentary on weed. Uh, Weeds is what it was called, but mm -hmm. um, the documentary that highlighted Paige Figgy and her daughter Charlotte. And I remember 20 minutes into it, I was just like, I was blown away. I was like, there's no way that I cannot not do something about this. And I felt compelled that I needed to do something. Um, I have two young daughters myself, and I know that if I had a child that was in this position, I would, you know, kick down every door and, and walk across coals to do whatever I could do to help. So I set up all night long, just research. I was Googling CBD. I was Googling cannabidiol. I was, I was trying to, every buzzword I heard in that, that video, I was trying to look into see what Dravet syndrome was. And, and uh, next thing I knew it was almost two thirty three in the morning. And, I, and I, the next day I got up and I was, I remember, texting uh, our mutual friend and Jennifer and telling her that, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to call her and see what I can do and, and see where we can go uh, with this. And that's kind of the genesis of how this all started. But um, we talked on the phone several times. She kind of told me her story about her family and how, you know, how it's affected their family. Um, you know, the issues they deal with on a daily basis that you don't think about if you're, you don't have a child that's suffering from this. Um, the quality of life uh, that they have. They have an older an older child. Um, I mean, this affects everybody, not just the, the child suffering from it, but the parents, the, the other children. And so, you know, I felt like after watching that documentary and reading everything, I felt it was safe enough to, to, to actually, okay, let's see what we can draft and see what we can do. And I had reached out to uh, Paige Figgy, who was um, kind of helps with the realm of caring in Colorado that uh, goes around the nation talking to legislators, trying to educate them. And that's what I knew was going to have to take place here in Mississippi in the legislature here. I was going to have to educate not only myself uh, further, but I was going to have to educate other legislators on what we're talking about. Because the big movement with the free weed and, and the medical marijuana and, and hearing that this is not something that gets you high. This is not a, a chemical that's smoked. It's not something that you snort or take a pill this is an oil that's basically <laughs> right. put in food because the thc content is very low which is the psychoactive property correct that is associated with the high from from marijuana whereas this is a cbd oil that um is it's 15 it's a different chemical compound it's, right yeah it's right. 15 percent at a minimum and and this is something that i think was so unique that mississippi has that and Paige told me this she said when we passed the bill she told me she goes we are so excited, not just because y'all have passed this bill and you're the 23rd state, but you're the only state that has the natural products lab at Ole Miss. We're the mm -hmm. only state in the nation that has a, an institution that has studied marijuana and cannabis and the effects and the chemical makeup. And, and we have such a wealth of knowledge that, you know, the wheels in my head started turning like, okay, well, how can we incorporate this into the bill where we can bring in their expertise and their knowledge and experience with cannabis and how can we harness that to for the greater good of what we're trying to do here and um, so I've talked to, to uh, Dr. Walker and Dr. Mahmoud El Soli who is the foremost expert in the world on cannabis um, talked to them uh, numerous times and tried and they helped in the crafting of this legislation along with Paige uh, Figgy and uh, several others the uh, Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics helped I mean I consulted with I mean, tons of different outside groups to make sure they were educated about what was coming down the pike. Because I didn't want them to to get a news clip of, oh, we're legalizing marijuana. And then they send out an email <laughs> to their masses saying, hey, call your legislator and tell them to kill this bill. You know, I needed it to be out front before I even dropped the bill. I went and met with these people to say, look, here's what I'm fixing to do. Do you have a problem with anything? And once I explained it to them and once we provided proof, you know, of what we're talking about, they were they were okay with it mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting because the the idea that Ole Miss has this this grow op operation that they've had for decades um, 
which is where it's going to be grown and harvested, and then through Ole Miss's medical research, uh, or through, through their med school is where it'll be dispensed to the pharmacy, the pharmacy right. services at UMC. And and the the federal government is okay with this. I mean, it, it's it's. Um, this yeah, is where this it gets is, a little more this interesting. This is where, yeah, I, I thought I was dipping my toe into a pool and I realized I was dipping into the Gulf of Mexico. It Once we got approval and passed the law, that was not the end of the story. We had to then go to the federal government to seek approvals from several different agencies that govern that lab. Um, this is not a lab that's run by the state of Mississippi. This is a lab that's run from the federal perspective. We had to get waivers from NIDA, which is the National Institute of Drug Abuse, and we had to get uh, waivers from the DEA. These waivers have customarily taken months, if not years, to get. Um, then they're only good for a year. So if you get a permit and they wait until the end of the year to give it to you, well, then it's at the end of the year, it's gone. So we applied, um, we being Dr. Walker and the Natural Products Lab, applied for uh, to NIDA for permission to grow the plant. And they received that fairly quickly, which was really great. We hadn't had the bill. The bill hadn't been signed yet by the governor, but they were trying to get their ducks in a row that if he signed it, they would have everything in place to go ahead and proceed. Well, when he signed it, they made application with the DEA. And within three weeks, they got a response. And he told me that was the fastest response he's ever received from the federal government or the DEA on a quota at that lab. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, Dr. Walker, needless to say, was very happy and they're excited at the lab to, to be a part of this project. And for people don't, who don't know, uh, that kind of speed and approval to get that kind of nod of okay from the federal government is a huge thing because no matter where you go in the U.S., whether it's Colorado that has it fully outright legalized or Oregon or Washington, wherever it's medically, you know, exactly. okay, California, any of the places that have done it originally, whether it's CBD oil, THC, marijuana, any of it, it is all illegal to the federal government at the highest level. Basically. And it's illegal to cross state lines with it. Right. That's the problem. They couldn't. She couldn't go take a plane trip to Colorado and pick up some CBD oil mm -hmm. and come right. back. Which she is would so, be arrested. Which and is something. Believe me, it was definitely a thought. Yeah. I mean, because when you're in that situation, I mean, and I know it's. <laughs> At first, you're just like, I'll go to Mexico. I mean, and, and, and when you have to sit back and kind of calm yourself and be like, okay, well, the outcome is not going to benefit her in the end. So we have to do this the right way. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's it's just it's been a it's been a tough road it's been there's been a lot of red flags but i am amazed at the fact that how quickly everybody came together and made it happen mm -hmm. i've never seen such a thing in my life i mean i really did not i thought that it was just going to take so much time and things were going to get pushed you know under the you know under the radar and just and I, I was just amazed at how quickly everybody just kind of came together and made this work. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely amazed. Yeah. And what you said about, you know, considering an actual move to wherever, wherever you can right. get the medicine for your I child. I mean, we'd go to Egypt if we had to, but it, it was not something that we could do overnight. It just was not possible to pick up your family and move. You have to have resources. You have to have the means. You, right. have, you can't just move. Which in Dr. Uh, Gupta's second documentary, Fall follow up to uh, weeds weeds too mm -hmm. that's one of the big things that he focuses on is families you know on a larger uh, and a larger spectrum of families right. who are really considering going there and uh, I know one of the the uh, uh, children that they kind of focused on in that particular the, the follow-up um, you know one of the parents would go to Colorado with the child they'd stay there for a while um, they would see the results, and then then it became this huge debate of do we pick up and move our entire life, move away from our family because you can't move it across the borders, you know, all these kinds of things. And it becomes this, you know, really hard thing to watch, especially when you see what the children go through themselves. I mean, in the first documentary, you see it follows Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you see her, her many seizures, I believe, you know, they were saying 50 she was seizures. 50 she was having 300 a seizures a week on yeah. average. And right. this is, this is a child for your listeners that don't know this. This is a child that was five years old. She had all of her cognitive skills were regressing. She wasn't talking. She wasn't walking. She was on a feeding tube for over a year. I think she was on so many narcotics that the, the medicine she was on was leaving her in a state where she couldn't 
function or she couldn't grow uh, cognitively. And her mom, I guess they had given her, uh, you know, the diagnosis to the last resort was to have a surgery where they split your, basically cut your brain in half. Mm -hmm. And before she went to that extreme, she wanted to try this CBD oil. And she, I think the first um, time she administered the CBD oil to her daughter, she went seven days seven without having days. a seizure. That's right. And so you take that and, and granted it's anecdotal evidence. We, and I think this is another thing that I'll, I'll touch on in a little while, but you know, it's proof that it does work. Now this may not work for every single person that takes it. Absolutely. But my thing, you know, my thinking was if it helps one child in Mississippi, it's worth it. Right. It's one family that'll be positively impacted. Cause mm -hmm. we, we pass bills up here all the time that we say, you know, we're campaigning, you know, Hey, I want to go and represent my district. I want to do something good for my people. Well, this is a bill that potentially has the chance to, to really affect the lives of Mississippians for the good. I mean, this is something that can really make an impact on Mississippi families and the children here that are suffering from some of these different ailments that, uh, that leave them in a position where, you know, there is no quality of life and there is, you know, there's a lot of uh, just pain and suffering and, and something like this is really, uh, it's been one of the highlights of my three years in the Senate is to see something like this come out because this is truly something that will help the people. Mm -hmm. Ashley, how long has your daughter been taking the CBD? She has not or had she... CBD yet. Okay. We have not been able to get um, our hands on it just like all the other Mississippians. We have to wait. Okay. It's just, it's a process. Um, like I said, everybody is, is doing their job and, and is working as fast as they possibly can. And at this point, that's all we can really ask for. Mm -hmm. um, Harper Grace is actually... And when we started this bill, she was way worse off than she is now. Um, I can't say that she's getting better, but she's not getting worse. Um, you know, when I contacted Senator Harkins, it was, you know, we were in the hospital and it was two to three hour long seizures and doctors didn't know how to break them. And so now Harper Grace has 30 to 45 minute seizures, which that is prolonged and they're very dangerous, but that's good for us. Um, and, and, and it's not as long and we're not in the hospital as much, but we're still there, but she's not in dire straits. So we just have to give it all to God and be patient. I mean, that's just, that's all we can do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's it. I mean, P part of this process, uh, once we've passed this bill, they've also uh, applied for the permits and the waivers. The, the natural products lab has, has began to plant the plants. Um, they're going to be growing it, extract it. They'll process the, uh, harvest them, process it and extract the oil. And then once we do that, uh, in the meantime, while that's all going on, it's going to take a few months to do several months. The UMC, uh, the pediatric, uh, neurologist at Blair Batson are developing protocols to submit to the FDA to have a study in which this will be the first study done on the effects of CBD on children with intractable epilepsy. This is a huge moment for UMC, and, and I think that's it's one that, you know, the UMC has so many firsts that people may not realize, you know, the first heart transplant was performed there. Uh, Dr. Hannah Gay recently with her uh, breakthrough on curing an AIDS uh, baby. Uh, just so many things that, that, yeah. that have happened there, but this is, you know, a potential for UMC to, to really shine and, and show not only the United States, the rest of the country, but the world what type of uh, effect this could have on children with epilepsy. Mm -hmm. So they're developing the protocols right now. That once that gets uh, submitted to the FDA and approved, we will have the first indication for epilepsy for use with the CBD oil. Then uh, eventually they can expand it out. What other uses does CBD have on the human body? What other ailments does it affect? Mm -hmm. um, many different neurological disorders may be uh, may be helped by CBD. That's what we don't know. And that's why I wanted to include in, in the legislation, UMC being involved in this because of the med school there and because of the, the hospital and all the, the studying and research that's, that's possible there. Mm -hmm. But once, I mean, this is something that's not going to happen, you know, this week or next month, mm -hmm. this will be probably later on in the year uh, at the earliest that they'll be able uh, to distribute CBD to children, but it's going to have to go through 
Um, you know, doctors that are in on the coast, uh, North Mississippi, Hattiesburg, you know, Natchez, Vicksburg, the Delta, um, they can uh, collaborate, I believe, with the, the doctors at the at uh, Blair Batson, and if they're patients that are in these other parts of the state, they can work with these doctors and get them into this serv- into this study. But it's going to be on a tiered level, and uh, they'll have to follow FDA protocols, whatever they they may be. And that was definitely one of my questions for you, because um, I've had a lot of families contact me, of course, and they're just like, "How do we get our hands on it? What do we do?" You know, and is it because is it a wait? Do people is it from the severe case to the? I mean, how? Yeah, there's going to be a. T- I mean, they have to to satisfy a tier. And and what the do- I met with the doctors last week, and what their concern is is that is they take a child right now that may be having seizures, but is cognitively developing. She's they're playing, they're mm-hmm. doing things. They just happen to have seizures. They want to make sure that the effects of CBD do not diminish the cognitive the future cognitive development of that child right um what they indicated to me is they would start first with the children that really need it that that are in desperate shape for something and then after they fill that that tier they're going to start moving it into other areas to see what we're doing i mean it's an experimental drug um study I mean, this is what we're dealing with. We don't know, and this is going to be the first scientific uh, research done on it. So, I mean, they have to do it in a way that is responsible. Um, you know, one of the doctors told me, she's like, you know, you don't want to get the call from a parent that, hey, the, the drug, the experimental drug you gave my daughter or my son killed him. You know, it, it did something to them. And so th- there is, a you know, as much anticipation and as much excitement that is out there that this is, past and it's a potential um a potential you know for some families a lifesaver it has to be done in a responsible way and it has to be done in such a way that that we actually know what we're dealing with and and we're going to be dealing with a product that we have a known we have a known product it's coming from a lab with scientific standards and the best practices uh for harvesting and processing so it's almost like you're getting a, a, a pharmaceutical grade um product in the oil and we want to see how it affects children. How you, right. uh, from a pharmaco- uh, pharmacological standpoint, how do you um, ration it, or how do you prescribe it, dose it for body weight, for you know age, for all these different elements that, that there's really no scientific data for. They're having to figure out, and they're having to try. There's anecdotal evidence. There's anecdotal uh, figures that they've heard of. But how do you? I mean, this is something that's going to have to be done from a FDA approved standpoint. Mm-hmm. And that was really the only way that we were going to be able to get this thing done is if we had proper oversight and, and had it done in a responsible way uh, to satisfy a lot of people that were, that voted for it and, and approved it. Uh, yeah. So I but, like to call it the classy way. We Mississippi did it very classy. Like, you know, well, we, other states just kind of jumped in head first and just kind of, you yeah, know. some states, all they did was say, if you have CBD, it's an affirmative defense. If you're right, over for right. It. Well, you so. can still be indicted for having it, but it doesn't, you know, we, we did several, there are several things the legislation did. It took it off of the um, list of class of, uh, of drugs, different schedule list of drugs. Mm-hmm. It, um, we also uh, dictated what percentage of CBD has to, at a minimum, has to be in the oil, what percentage maximum of THC can be in there so there's a lot of different um different you know parts of the bill that address the cvd and, and everything but we wanted to make sure we were doing it right to protect our citizens because this is a new drug it's an experimental drug if you will or it's not a, a new drug because the plant's been around forever mm-hmm. uh it's you know it's been here since the, the early times <laughs> but it's uh it's something that you know it, it does weigh heavy on on me the the fact that this is going to be something new and, and we want to make sure we're not just unleashing something that's going to potentially be harmful later on yeah. to kids that are, you know, right now they're fine cognitively, but you don't want to give them something that's going to diminish their cognitive growth or development uh, neurologically down the road mm-hmm. and uh, to cure something that, you know, there may be other medicine out there. We don't mm-hmm. know. So it's, it's a big experiment. There's a lot more. It's over my pay grade. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried to pick up on some big words uh, in our meetings, but I, I think at the end of the day, they're, they're trying to do it the right way. And I you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's their, you know, they're the ones that are going to be writing the recommendations for these children. And, um, 
you know, they're, they're going to have the weight of, of whatever happens. Mm -hmm. So, but it, it is a, you know, it, it comes from a kind of a, a method of last resort or, uh, you know, just a, I'm trying to think of the word they use to describe the. the Don't hurt yourself part. now. <laughs> uh, compassionate use. Yeah. It comes from a position of, of compassionate use um, that this is some families, this is the last thing. I mean, they've gone through every round of drug that's right. imaginable. I mean, she mm -hmm. can list off all the drugs that her daughter's been on. And she's two years old. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're not even, I mean, she hasn't even been through half of what some of these kids have been through. Just mm -hmm. that Josh and I have had the pleasure <laughs> of meeting. I mean, not even yeah. half. And so, and that's another thing that I would, and people who are listening, you know, needs and who are considering this for their children, um, you know, it's definitely something you want to educate yourself on um, and know your facts about because, you know, we went into this knowing that this may not work for Harper. I mean, and it may not work for many, but it will help somebody and it, it will help. And, and, and that's what gives me the encouragement and gave him as well. I'm, you know, but just educate yourself and know your facts about what you're wanting to get into because, you know, and I fully respect the fact that we are doing this as a study because, you know, we want to know what's in it that makes it, you know, control epilepsy. We, you know, and I, I fully respect that and I can't ask for anything more. I mean, so if it takes us waiting three years, then that's what it takes. I mean, so I have no complaints yeah. as far as the waiting time or how quickly everybody's working or not working. I mean, it's, I just, I couldn't have asked for anybody better to who I've had the pleasure of working with or you know it's been amazing yeah well I think a lot of the uh what's important to find out more about what it is and what it can do exactly is to give it, it it's been this the stance of legality towards it um just this idea and I guess that goes back to the education process you yeah. know the fact that CBD you know combined with a low THC um combination which won't produce a psychoactive effect in the user who takes it for us to be able to study that you know just because it was a part of the cannabis plant stopped researchers and people who, to get funding and to even get approval to study mm -hmm. it so for us to be able to take this route so that we can start studying it will open a lot of doors i think and we can figure out how this medicine will help a, you know, a larger range of people, you mm -hmm. know, and we can get away from this stigma right. that has been going on for decades. Absolutely. And see, there's only so much you can learn on Google. There's right. only so much that the internet is going to tell you about mm -hmm. this. I mean, that you're going to have to, we're going to have to go the route that we're going. Yeah. And there's been so much uh, ignorance with anything that's <laughs> marijuana or cannabis related because oh, yes. it, it's just like the hemp plant. Uh, which is the male version of, of the cannabis, mm -hmm. you know, family, which is a textile product. You know, it can be used for clothing and papers, and it's highly durable, easy to grow, um, has a full set of amino acids. It's edible in some sense, mm -hmm. but it can't get you high. There's no THC to it, but yet it's illegal because back in the day, William Randolph Hearst wanted to secure his monopoly on paper, on the paper industry, and hemp was becoming... A new industry that was looking like it was going to take over so he ran a smear campaign on it and as a result uh, you know saying that marijuana was making people crazy and they were throwing out these ties with racial injustices of, of you know just ridiculous things uh, I mean yellow of course, journalism yellow journalism <laughs> saying that you know uh, you know black people were giving it to white women and wanting to dance with them and then they had you know people who were going crazy jumping out of buildings and all these kinds of things and as a result you know it all got thrown under the bus and now we're still we're still in in this year combating this 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 whole thing where you know there's no reason for hemp to be illegal to not be able to be grown you because i mean you can go to a, a, a store now and buy hemp lotion you can buy hemp shampoo oh yeah i've heard lots of ladies say that it's the best shampoo you can get i love the lotion <laughs> yeah, honestly i think you can we can sterile seeds can, for uh smoothie and people will crush yeah. it up and i think we can import it i think you can have seeds but if you put it in the ground I yeah know, yeah you can't grow it or sell it i think we can right. canada produces it canada's a big producer yeah. of hemp i think we buy it off from them yeah. <laughs> uh, which i mean 
It just goes back to this idea. Well, the farm that bill that they just passed in Congress has a hemp exemption this past year, and it, it gives the states to the authority to adopt their own, promulgate their own rules and regulations concerning hemp if they recognize the hemp the, the farm bill, the hemp exemption in there, states can do that and set up their own rules and regulations to govern hemp. I think eight or nine states may have already done it. And yeah. some of them are having problems right now. Uh, I've had conversations with the uh, a member from the agriculture department, and that's something that they're going to study and look at and see. But it's not anything that they're going to act on right now. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Uh, something that, going back to this, just this is a whole learning process for everybody in the state. Uh, I really wanted to hear what uh, you said you went so far when you were developing this bill you went so far as talking with the Baptist Union well I talked to several people I talked to several preachers there, there's a, two preachers in the Senate yeah I really want to hear their reactions to, toward it that was actually the first person I went to after you know saying look I said uh, Senator Gandy and Senator Jackson uh, both are men of the cloth and I went to uh, Reverend Gandy Senator Gandy first and I, I said look I, I've got a bill that I'm about to drop and uh, I want to get your thoughts on it. And to myself, I thought if I can't get him on board, I'm, I'm going to be a, you know, battling uphill. Mm -hmm. And so I told him about the situation. I told him about, uh, you know, what we're dealing with. And I showed him, you know, stuff. And I had already had conversations with the Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics, and they have, uh, they were absolutely wonderful. I don't think if I had, if I didn't have their help at the beginning of this, I don't think this bill would have passed. I mean, they really looked into this, um, Director Marshall Fisher and uh, Interim Director Sam Owen and Felicia Hall all were just instrumental in getting this done. But they looked at it and, and gave me some information on it and wrote an opinion about the whole uh, issue with CBD and that they didn't have a problem with it. They knew it didn't get you high. So I had that going going forward, and I, and I explained this to Senator Gandy. And, you know, after I got through talking to him, I kind of said, well, what do you think? And he kind of sat back in his chair on the floor of the Senate, and he said, well, Josh. And he kind of looked at me with that look, and I'm like, oh, no, here it comes. He goes, you've got to do this. <laughs> Absolutely. You can't not do it. And um, that kind of gave me the momentum to, I was like, okay, this is, this is going to be good. I, I, you know, if I can get him, I'm sure that I can get several other of my colleagues to understand and, and to look at what we're dealing with. And same thing with senator jackson he you know said yeah that's yeah we got to do something you know for the children especially this is something that could help them yes let's 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 go with it so through this process i reached out to several i reached out to the uh to the christian action network at the baptist uh union over there um talked to dr jimmy porter uh rob chambers i, I spoke to a lot of people a lot of groups because I didn't want them seeing something that would may, may be on the news and they may call it, hey, you know, the Mississippi legislature is trying to pass marijuana for medical reasons, and which is not what we're doing. It's not medical marijuana. It's not free weed. It's not any of that. So I wanted to be ahead of the curve before they got news off of, of a TV station or a newspaper that just glossed it as medical marijuana. And I wanted them to know exactly what we we're dealing with. I wanted to know who we had talked to, who was supporting, supportive of the measure. Um, I wanted them to, to ask any questions, and, and that way I could get them any answers they needed. And, you know, Dr. Jimmy Porter, who I really uh, appreciate his openness and his candor through this whole process, was, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we got to use common sense about this. This is something that, that, uh, you know, we need to use common sense and in, in our discretion in what we do about treating illnesses and where we, you go to the hospital right now, you know how many different forms of heroin and, and cocaine you can take for different issues? I mean, it's, it's right, amazing yeah. how many drugs are in the hospital right now and where they come from. But yet when they're administered properly, they have the, the proper desired effect. When they're abused is when they become a problem. But we're talking about some medicine that doesn't even have a psychoactive effect that you cannot take this product and either snort it uh you know eat it whatever you want to call it whatever you want to do to it it will not get you high uh, so once we i felt like we got that message across that what we're dealing with is something safe um everybody began to get in in, in the same uh direction we were all pulling in the same direction and, and the momentum was picking up and the went to the uh, committee first committee we went to 
it sailed right through. And then he showed up at my doorstep with the bill and said, yeah, the, the law is named after your daughter. And he sho- and it was so shocking. And he surprised me with it. It was like the best thing ever. And he couldn't wait. And he had this like just awesome grin on his face. And he was just like, it passed unanimously. And by the way, it's named after your daughter. And it was it was so awesome. It was just so great. Yeah. Do we know if it's it really habit forming at all? Or is that, is that something that we don't no, know I, yet? You know, I called... Um, page and asked her i said you know what what type of issues have you had with it since you've given it to your daughter and she's like oh well she sleeps better she has a better eating habits uh she's she riding horses yeah, she, she, goes to school. Horses now. she she got actually got to where she titrated off a lot of her meds that she was currently on for the seizures so she's on less medication she is eating and swallowing on her own she's off her feeding tube she's starting to walk again she's talking again she's starting to all her cognitive skills are starting to come back so she's like we have not had any negative side effects from the cbd that's from her lips to my ears i i you know she said emphatically I, that's what i asked her i said you know has there been any problem whatsoever in relation to since she started putting her on the cbd oil and she said no we have not had anything any problems and she too told me the same thing uh, you know because of course when we were in the emergency room one morning i actually saw the same the first um weed segment by dr gupta and um we were just my husband and i were blown away because we were just like wow you know the that family really has it way worse off and thank god it's not us and then lo and behold two months later we got the same diagnosis yeah and I sought Paige Fiji out. I was like, I gotta get in touch with this woman. And I did, and I got her on the phone and I said, what do I do? And she said, honestly, your best bet is to move and, or get a bill. So I was like, okay, how is this, you know, how am I gonna, how do we do this? I mean, I had no clue how to do this. And then Jennifer was like, okay, well, I went to school with Senator Harkins and it all just kind of just fell through. I mean, it was just, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. A long journey, no doubt. Yeah. It was, it was. And like I said, you know, um, Harper is not as bad off as most kids out there in Mississippi, mm-hmm. in Mississippi. And, you know, and, and I just felt like we just, we can't leave. I just, I didn't want to leave all these other children behind, even Mm -hmm. if I decided to move to Colorado, Mm -hmm. um, because somebody had to be their voice and advocate Mm -hmm. and all of us as a team, you know, I think worked tirelessly to make sure that that happened. Do you, do you feel like there's a change? I mean, it's, it's noticeable, isn't it? The change in America of the stances that people are taking to these kinds of alternative medicines. I mean, we're talking about it now and it sounds like a miracle, uh, solution. You've got this plant that's always been here that apparently doesn't have as many side effects or as you said, Mm-hmm. any that they can tell it's got a high success rate um it's getting people 87 percent success rate 87 mm-hmm. percent. and it's getting you know in this case there's no psychoactive thing to get them high mm-hmm. it's getting them off their other medications i mean it just you know it almost sounds like snake oil but the research from what we have so far is there and when people like Dr. Sanjay Gupta go on CNN with these documentaries and he says flat out, you know, everything that we've been thinking about marijuana is wrong. What I've been saying for years, I've been incorrect and I'm, I'm sorry for what I've said, you know, and then he presents these documentaries. Then you've got, uh, Morgan Spurlock who's doing pieces on it. You've got, um, you know, Netflix is in tons of people's homes. Oh, and yeah, gosh, and it's you see full, it everywhere. Full of medical marijuana and just me- regular marijuana. I mean, people, you've got the internet now. I mean, there's just no stopping the flow of information. And I think that, once again, education has been the biggest barrier for people. And now it's accessible to, I mean, you can, if you've got a computer, if you've got a television, you can, you can turn on, you can tune in, and you oh, can yes. find something out that, you know. You know, one of the things that, that I think is, is, you know, incumbent. This in no way was meant to be a, a gateway to, all right, now we got this passed. Let's try to get something else passed or let's no, try to do absolutely fruit. absolutely not. This was about this issue and this issue alone. Mm-hmm. Now, if it opens up the discussion or if it opens up the research into what other plants, what other, um, you know, what are the drugs that are out there right now that 
are capable of helping people, that's that's something that science will figure out and, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to provide evidence of. And that's for a discussion for whenever they do provide that kind of evidence. Um, you're never going to legislate morality on people. People are always going to abuse different things, uh, drugs, whether it's drugs, alcohol, um, you know, addictions, whatever the case may be. There's nothing you can do from a legislative perspective to take that away. I mean, that's inherently just part of life. Mm -hmm. You know, we can try to help treat, we can try to help cure, but people, you know, as soon as people get better and get off of it, you got another, you know, group of people that are getting into it. And as fast <laughs> as you're, you know, eliminating people from it, you got more people coming in and, and that are getting hooked on drugs. So, I mean, it's something that will all, abuse will always be there, I think. I, it's just not that you're going to prevent people from abusing drugs, but um, I think that what we brought to the table and what we're talking about here is something that's not in that realm of, of a discussion of, you know, this is a, a bad thing. This is going to open up the door to something else. And um, if they do say it, you know, I had several comments on Facebook and, and I saw other groups. I had, you know, one of the, um, I think the, the marijuana policy project out of DC put this, uh, put this uh, announcement out of a press release saying, you know, Mississippi will never see anything. Federal government will never approve it. This, this d bill does nothing uh, but a, yes, provide an yeah. affirmative defense. So I called them and I said, Hey, I wanted to talk to you. I saw this press release y'all put out and they're like, yeah, it does the, you know, this is what it does. Blah, blah, blah. I said, I, you're incorrect. <clears throat> and we sat there for 10 minutes and argued about it. And I showed her where the bill was and, and showed her where she was incorrect about the statement she made. She's like, all right, well, I apologize. We'll put out a new press release and I haven't seen anything else from them. But it, it just goes to show people will, will fly off the handle and make assumptions and, and say things that aren't correct. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, why I would encourage your listeners to, to do their own research and, and really search out, talk to their doctors and find out what's going on and what's available and and what the effects are i mean some doctors are are adamantly against it mm -hmm. they just think it's like yep. you said snake oil right um if i haven't talked to a mother i mean there's no greater force in this world than a mother on a mission and if i hadn't talked to these moms and seen and heard from them the effects that it's had on their lives and, and how their children are doing that have been on cbd it's you know I probably would have a hard time believing it too, but it's, you know, I've seen it, I've talked to them and, um, I'm just, I'm glad that Mississippi now is going to have a chance to, to maybe partake into some of that, uh, success and, and, uh, relief for these families. Hmm. What is your thoughts on the way America is shifting? I mean, it starts out at one thing and then it kind of progresses. Do you feel, I mean, is it in the hands of the people if they, if they want it to be, you know, something that expands from what it is? I mean, what do you think is the future for Mississippi in regards to this particular medicine? I think, I mean, my intent with this bill was to make it available for anything that it may help mm -hmm. solve. I mean, the, the, the impetus and the, and the genesis of it all was for children with the epilepsy because that was what was the focus of the the documentary and that was the focus of what it it may help uh cure or help uh, alleviate a lot of the symptoms but this if it does something for parkinson's or ms or uh, autism ptsb I mean, yeah. or brain injuries or i mean there's all kind of anecdotal evidence out there that that yeah. people have said that that cbd has a um has had an effect on well if that's the case and and these doctors want to research it i'm i'm all for it i think that's exactly why we passed it. This is, I mean, we were making this available for them to do what they do, which is research and develop. I mean, our country and companies spend billions and billions and billions of dollars researching and trying to develop cures for all these different ailments. And if we have a new compound or a new uh, product out there that is not harmful for what we know yet, but that's what, that's what we're here for to, to be, uh, you know, engineers of, of modern marvels to, to cure people to, you know, that's why, you know, that's why people, that's why we think America's so great is because mm -hmm. we're, we're so, um, you know, forward thinking and, and kind of out in front of everybody else. And I, I think that's why, um, you know, this has been, this has been kind of received so openly and, and excitingly, at least from the, the UMC and the, and the natural products lab, they, they're, 
I'm telling you, they are super excited about the possibilities this brings. And this is something they've been actually trying to do for last year and a half, two years, is trying to get into this type of research. And it just happened to, coincidentally, this all came about at the same time. And, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, El Soli was just like, I've been screaming this from the top of my lungs for, for years now. That CBD, I think, has a medicinal value. What it is, we don't know yet. But now we're fixing to find out. So your bill allows UMC specifically to research CBD? Yes. This bill has a three-year uh, window. And basically, we'll have to come back in three years and address it. It's got a repealer that basically repeals the law in three years. But several hundreds of bills that get passed have repealers in them. And that means that you just come back and make sure everything's okay with the law and you extend the repealer, extend it out another five years, or you can actually remove the repealer and it will be permanent. Um, but we wanted it in a, in, a, in a position where we could monitor it and we could watch what was going on. We didn't want everybody, you know, growing their own CBD <laughs> and cause you don't know what you're getting yeah. and, and it could be, you know, Bubba's uh, it wouldn't CBD be done shop the right on way the corner it, by the yeah, gas station. Right. It and, wouldn't be done the right way. Yeah. And, and so we wanted to have <laughs> controls on it so we know what we're getting. And I think three years into it, we'll, we'll have some we'll have some results and we'll see some some definitive, oh, I do too. Uh, you know, information from these studies to say, hey, this is making a difference or this is not making a difference. Either way, we'll, we'll know one way or the other and we'll, you know, probably extend the repealer out or, or remove it. And um, but once the doctors told me once they get that first indication from the FDA, it is easier to receive other uh, FDA approval for other indications for other ailments. And what uh, are we waiting on as far as like are we is the FDA having to? Oh, well, they're they're actually getting the protocols together now to submit to the FDA. Okay. So they're in the process of doing that. I mean that. It's going to take a couple of, you know, several months for them to grow and extract and process it. So while they're doing that, the hospital has been working on it since the bill passed. Yeah. And uh, they're continuing to work on it. It's a, a pretty lengthy process. It's not something that uh, gets done very quickly. But uh, they, you know, UMC has been updating me uh, regularly as, as well as the Natural Products Lab. They've been very responsive. Uh, I can't tell you how much our universities uh, are going to, you know, I think this will help. Uh, display all the research and uh, the technology that we have it'll be on display and the beneficiaries will be not only our children but you know our, our citizens I know this is gonna sound weird but I thought because I feel like I'm the one who's interviewing but as somebody on the political side what would you because I, of course like I told you I have several parents who come to me or they'll, they'll email me and they're like well what do we do how do we do it and do you, I mean, so what would you say to these parents? Do they need to wait or do they need well, to, what action do they need to take? You know, well, I want to make sure that, that we kind of, you know, let everybody's expectations be, you know, not tempered, but because we don't want to get false yeah, we hope. Don't, yeah. We don't want to get know. false hope. And I don't want to tell you, Hey, it's going to be ready in a month. And right. It's not. It's right. Gotta be, the plant has to be grown. It has to be harvested, extracted. These, these, um, uh, plans have to be submitted to the FDA for approval. Um, this process could go into the fall and the first of the year mm -hmm. is when I've told it may be available by then. As far as a, as a study goes, um, is, you know, is it a selected few or is it the, I the, think what they, they look for are the criteria. Okay. Does your child fit in this category of, okay, they're, you know, they have, this many seizures they're in this type of shape i mean there's a lot of factors that go into whether it's not you know we're not going to pick your child because they're only four foot two and they're not three foot eight i mean it's what level does what tier does your child classify as as far as their health and their cognitive development and where they are right who needs it the most yeah Absolutely. who needs it the most at, at this point at the, in, and right. that are in the worst shape i think uh and that's not excluding any other child who has no, no, it no, by no. any means. It's just, yeah, okay, yeah. I get what you're saying. And Absolutely. So, but I think, you know, what they kind of told me was the, the big thing was that the cognitive development, they don't want to do something that's going to jeopardize a child's cognitive development of where they are expected to be and give them some medicine that gets them lower 
than mm-hmm. where they were supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that's the reason why they're wanting to really be careful about how they approach this and how they um, how they perform. That study. makes a lot of sense, actually. Now that it's putting it's being put out on the table, because if you do have a child who's cognitive um, skills are very low and then you give them something that might slow it down then how would you know is that does that is that yeah. is that I mean, what they're trying what, to say or? yeah okay. he said that, you know their kids he, he told me that he has patients that are you know normal kids if you just walked up and looked at them they're fine right they like have Harper Grace. they run around yeah. they play they do all this stuff and so their cognitive develop may get on a chart and may be expected to be you know at a nine by age 24. Mm-hmm. well if they give them this medicine and all of a sudden, their cognitive development is projecting them to be on a 6.5. I mean, I'm just making a, a scale yeah, up. right, right. That's the way they, uh, you know, kind of told me is they don't want to do anything to a child whose cognitive ability was going to be X. And because they gave them this medicine, it's at Y. Mm. And but Then it gets sticky because then it's quality of life that has to be factored in as well. You absolutely. Know, if you have a child with a cognitive ability of 20, but who's having seizures all the time and that kind of thing versus a point scale of 10, but they're not having near as many seizures and, or an inappetite problems or things like that, mm-hmm. you know, it, that all has to be factored in, I'm sure as well. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, one of the things that we've talked at, at UMC is talked about trying to have a community forum where we can talk about these issues and talk about what the expectations are. So parents don't think, Oh, I can get this or, or just every parent, the child starts calling this one doctor and, and oh yeah they're all just going to flock to umc yeah it's, it's, i mean it's, they it's, are i mean <laughs> the, the umc they told me they've they've almost gotten to where they have one person fielding calls about this for a little while when it was getting ready to be signed it was just such a a mad rush their phones were getting jammed up but but one of the things that you know we want them to do is we want them to know where it's going to take place how your child can be a part of it who what steps need to be taken your doctor's participation in it i mean some type of educational forum for parents and for the communities I so couldn't agree they, more. they know what's going on and that's something that we're in the in the discussion right now of trying to have and and what would that look like how would we do it would we do it on a web or would we try to have a town forum in you know central north and south mississippi or mm-hmm. something like that but i mean you know I, i've been i've been contacted by parents from the coast to to desota county i had a, a, a mom from desota county you. called me <laughs> yesterday and emailed me again today and and she's just like i've got 800 questions i could talk to you for five hours i said well let's start you know i'm, right, I'm in my truck right. driving and, my and i talked to her speak yeah and I, I talked to her and answered a bunch of questions and i said just email me back if you have any more she emailed me this morning and, and asked me questions and, and so i know a lot of parents have questions and and there's a feeling like they're missing the boat but there's nothing that is happening right now there's nothing that's going to be taking place in the immediate future and i mean this week next week next month even right. i mean the plants have to grow there's a process that's going to take place but but know that the opportunity is going to be available mm-hmm. the the bill has been passed and signed by the governor so we now have that opportunity coming to us it's mm-hmm. just it's a matter out you know it's a hurry up and wait mm-hmm. and that's the, the bad part i you know i would love to have it uh available right now if i could but mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I can't. Did you say the federal government has budged on making taking CBD off of the Schedule One list of drugs? No, the state did. The state of state Mississippi did. So did. We, still, we removed it from the Schedule list of drugs. Okay, so it's still federally, federally it's still, still illegal. A Schedule One drug. So this doesn't really like pave a way for other states. No, no. we're other the twenty third state. There are several several states had it in their legislation. Some passed it. Some didn't. Um, you know, they're going to keep trying to pass in other states. But I think this is where the federal government looked at. A case and said okay mississippi's got a lab that we regulate and they want to partner with a medical school to to legalize this this is a chance that we can maybe do it right and and have oversight into something so we know what's going on and i think that maybe is why they they uh decided to, per, to participate and and to okay their their uh quota waiver and and give them a permit for a large quota of cbd oil so just going to take time to unfortunately that's all right patience pays. you know and, and one of the interesting things dr summer said at umc the other day is like you know we medicine at, you know a long time ago was plant-based it was natural products that we derived medicine from penicillin all these other uh medicines 
then we got into the state where we tried to engineer everything synthetically. We tried to manufacture uh, medicine out of different compounds and stuff. And now he said it's almost like there's a renaissance and we're, we're starting to look back at plants and say, okay, now that we have all this new technology and we've done so many things with medicine, what are we missing mm -hmm. from what's right here underneath our, our feet? What can we, you know, what can we find available with what we have naturally mm -hmm. that may heal? And that's another aspect of this subject that gets a little sticky is this idea that prescription drug companies, you know, profit tens of millions of dollars every year on products that they make, you know, that are man-made, synthetic, these kinds of things. Um, for people to have access to a plant that, you know, can grow anywhere, it, it kind of puts up a barrier for in the minds of those companies because a lot of them are wondering, well, where is that the profit going to go? You know, is it going to leave us? And then you have for-profit prisons, uh, you have alcohol and tobacco companies that all kind of factor in because they make the most out of the industry. So they also have the most money to put campaigns up against it. They also, you know, just the way our polit political system works, they can put money in the pockets of people who can make choices and these kinds of things. So that's another aspect that gets really borderline. The, the, the moral issues get into it in a lot of ways. That's a good question. I think one we've we've legalized it, which is I think a big hurdle. Mm -hmm. Now that it's legal, when we, you know, initially, I guess once we get through this three year period, at the end of the three years, we may say, okay, well by then the ag department may have already done something about the hemp exemption, and there may be a hemp law in Mississippi to where people can manufacture it or people can grow it to sell to manufacture for whatever reason. You may have, um, I mean, the free market, I think, will, will dictate what goes on. Mm -hmm. If there's a, a, a chemical compound in cannabis that's shown to heal people, I think drug companies or, in, you know, innovative people may create their own company. Mm -hmm. It may be in Mississippi where they say, okay, we see a product that's needed, that uh, has an effect on people and people need it, so let's look into manufacturing it. Mm -hmm. And if it's done in a, you know, obviously a proper way with the FDA and, and all the meeting, all the, the guidelines, you know, let the free market run, mm -hmm. you know, the you, drug companies do make lots of money. I know they spend a lot of money on research and development. And that was where I was talking about earlier. They spend a lot of money trying to find the next drug. Mm -hmm. It's a continual process. They make money. They spend money on, on finding the next drug that's going to make money. A lot of them fail. They spend a lot of money on drugs that don't ever work out. Yeah. They don't ever get FDA approval. Um, so, you know, from a bigger picture, you know, I think that, that we've made it legal. We'll, we'll see what the effects are. We'll see what, uh, what type of, um, you know, I guess. Potential drawbacks. Yeah. Potential drawbacks or, or what the, the positives may be and let the free market run with it. Mm -hmm. Cause it could open up a whole new industry for Absolutely. hardware, software. I mean, I've seen hardware products that can break down. Um, a cannabis strain and then go to a software program that gives you in these nice these are documentaries I've seen where it, you know goes to a software on a computer that gives you nice pie charts and statistics that run that tell you exactly how much CBD is in it versus THC what strain its family came from mm -hmm. um, just all kinds of information that can go and if we store if we build up a database universally for those things, we can produce a safer medicine that's more controlled, that people know what they're getting instead of, um, you know, it'll help kind of control. And I know that's a big thing that people are worried about is how do you control a plant, you know, that people could grow anywhere that's always been here, um, you know, and that's a big concern for people, especially people who want to give it to their children is how do we know it's safe? How do we know we're getting the same quality every time, time and again? And I think it's going to take that new industry to come about to kind of make those products to regulate yeah. it to make it safer and i think that's what you know one of the things you hit on is, is it's not just the the pharmaceuticals aspect of this there's also a, a a another aspect that i think people don't realize is the farm side of it the farming of it the the seed development it, uh in the bill i also put language in there that would allow mississippi state to grow and research the agricultural aspects of it so not only are we going to have you know that portion of an industry that may be affected by 
the legalization of CBD oil. You also have the, the pharmacology side. You have the, you know, the sales. You have the distribution. You have, you have several different – I mean, this, these are jobs that ultimately could come to Mississippi. But, I mean, this is obviously years down the road. But, I mean, there's so many different aspects of this. This bill may open up in the future. Uh, but, you know, last I checked, Mississippi is a, a big agriculture state. So this yeah. is something that could definitely help our state. Does the state have a pre-existing cannabis research? Or they don't, or, or but they farming? do so much. I mean, Mississippi State obviously their agriculture department is huge, and right. they have a research station uh, that they grow plants. They develop seeds for all kind of different. You know, a, a, they've developed different types of grass. They've developed you know uh, disease resistant corn and all kind of different agricultural um, innovations that they've done at Mississippi State. I mean, it's incredible but i wanted them to be able to do the agricultural research on this plant to find out why is the you know how do we uh develop a seed that's more resistant to heat mm -hmm. or more resistant to weeds in this area of the country or whatever the case may be but it, it gives something that we can say hey this is if this does have a positive effect we need to be able to go from inception from seed to the oil uh, extraction into the end product to the user and we cover a wide array of of uh potential jobs and and, and creation of a market and and uh you know just opportunity for people mm -hmm. while all the while helping to to help families out and these children and uh anyone else suffering from uh epilepsy mm -hmm. and seizures it's a fascinating story for sure and where it could go from here is definitely an interesting an interesting thing for sure especially in mississippi i mean we've got all the makings to make something very unique happen and already in a very short amount of time something unique i feel like is already taking place we've just scratched the surface i think when this is all said and done and we look back five ten years from now i think that we will uh, we will have done some really big things with this, I, I you know I really do, and talking to the to the university and and to you know a lot of these scientists, it's it's something that they have really been wanting to do, and and uh, hopefully it'll all pan out to where it's beneficial for these children. Well, Senator Harkins, Ashley, I want to thank you both very much for coming here and sitting down with us and having this talk and shedding some light on this 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 whole situation. Um, in closing, I'd like. For people who want to find out more, whether it be about Dravet syndrome or the bill itself, um, you know, some outlets that they can go to. I'm, I'm personally, I'm going to upload the Dr. Sanjay Gupta videos to Coastal Noise, and um, you know, I'll write up a blog of, of different outlets to go to. Is there any any places that you guys would recommend that people might check out if they want to pursue pursue this topic? Well, I can tell you for the bill, uh, they can go to the uh, to the website, to the legislature website. It's legislature.ms.gov, and in the left-hand uh, corner, there's a box that you can enter in uh, the bill number, and the bill number is 1231. And if you enter in that bill number, House Bill 1231, you can search it, and that will pull up the bill. Now, it's about a 26-page bill, and this is a schedule uh, – the scheduled drug bill and um, anything that is underlined in the bill is what's been uh, added to it or changed and if there is a uh, star it looks like something has been taken out uh, of the bill so you know somebody looks at it the people that aren't used to looking at these bills on the website will be like what in the world is this but that's the actual bill and the section that that uh, specifically discusses uh, the CBD I believe is section three maybe Yes, Section 3. It begins on line 443 of the bill, and it talks about uh, the CBD oil and, and how it can be obtained, how do you, you know, uh, you have to be on the order of a, a recommendation of a, a doctor that's a licensed to practice in Mississippi, and, um, and it tells you that the oil must be obtained or, from or tested by the National Center for Natural Products Research at University of Mississippi and dispensed by the Department of Pharmacy Services at UMC. So they can read it there. Um, they're more than welcome to go on Facebook and, and Facebook me. I've got uh, my, I think it's Josh Harkins for Senate, my Facebook page. Uh, 
that they can go on and message me and, and I can try to answer their questions. Uh, you know, the, as far as the doctors that are going to be prescribing or that are going to be heading the study, uh, I would probably encourage you not to call them right now because mm-hmm. there's really nothing they can <laughs> do. They've got their hands uh, but yeah. Blair Batson is, is where they're going to be, uh, I guess, heading up the study uh, when whenever they do get approval. But, um, you know, I would recommend watching those videos. I mean, that is, it is powerful, powerful. No uh, footage that you will see and I, I guarantee you it, it will if it doesn't change your mind it will sure make you think uh, long and hard about it and um, you know what the realm of caring is another there's website. also um, you, you know if you want to um, learn more about um, Gervais syndrome or other types of um, seizure disorders there is the realm of org, and there is also um, DreveSyndrome.org um, and you can definitely look up any type of information that you need to find on those websites absolutely but um, yes most definitely Great. well thank you both again absolutely really it's been a pleasure it. thank you most very much definitely. and uh, thank everybody for listening and we will see you next time on the Coastal Noise Podcast <laughs>